Hello, everybody. Welcome back into the Dynasty Hot Seat, the only Dynasty show out there that is a certified inferno. Today, I had a bit of an idea. Um, a lot of people ask all the time, you know, how do you win a Dynasty Fantasy Football Championship? The best way to do it is actually just show you. So what I'm going to do over the course of the next couple of weeks is I'm going to show you some of the championships that I won this year. And I'm going to go through everything, every single move I've made to win that championship. I'm going to show you absolutely everything that it took to get there. Uh, before we go into that, if you are new here, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and share on this video. And if you would be so kind, hit that subscribe button as well. Really, really helps. We've been on a roll lately, so, so let's keep it going. So without further ado, let's find out how you win some Dynasty Fantasy Football Championship. <laughs> absolutely love that little intro video so let's start off with um now i can't put this up on the screen for whatever reason but i can show you everything else i'll tell you how i started this this was two years ago so 2021 started in this league here's how the initial draft went and this does not a championship winning team to me you'll see some of the moves that i made to make it that way though so starting off with the first pick in the draft i was at the 102 i took christian mccaffrey in at the 102 then my next pick in round two, I'll just go through this round two. You know, whenever I say the next one, it's round three. I didn't make any trades, so this is how it went. Went Christian McCaffrey, Russell Wilson, Clyde edwards alaire I mean, awful start. T. Higgins, Brandon Ayuk. In the sixth round, I took LaVisca Chenault. In the seventh round, I took A.J. Dillon. Again, not championship caliber here. Then round eight, managed to get Matthew Stafford. Round nine, Curtis Samuel. Round 10, Corey Davis. Round 11, Irv Smith Jr. Round 12, Alexander Madison. Then Jimmy G. Then DJ Dallas, Dolan Parham, Rob Gronkowski, James Washington, <laughs> Jacob Eason, Traquan Smith, and then David and Joe laying around in round number 20. That is an absolutely terrible roster. So how... Do you turn that around and turn it into a championship winning team in 2022? Well, let's find out, shall we? What I'm going to do, I'm going to pop my screen and you're going to have a little look at exactly that. So let's see. Here's our screen. We do want to see all that. This is every single transaction I made in that first season, okay? So you can see here, the first thing I did was pick up Josh Oliver, picked up Marquez Callaway, Colby Parkinson, Jalen Guyton. <sighs> Nothing great here, right? So we're not lighting the world on fire at all. I sold Jacob Eason for a third. I mean, sure, fine, right? Then I dropped Josh Oliver. I bought Brian Edwards, who I was a big believer in. Bought him. For a third and a fourth, Brian Edwards, obviously a free agent now, I think. Didn't amount to anything. Dropped Jalen Guyton. Then, you must have heard that name, LaVisca Chenault, right? Traded LaVisca Chenault and a 2022 second round pick. Got Jerry Judy. Excellent trade. Really with that in hindsight. So happy with how that worked out. Then, obviously you heard Clyde Edwards-Alaire, right? Got rid of Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Gave up Clyde and a third. Got DeAndre Swift. Again, slowly making these changes. At the time, you know, people said trade on my side. But, you know, hindsight 2020 turned out to be a good trade, you know, to get DeAndre Swift for there. Drop Colby Parkinson, drop Marquez Callaway. Then, knew I needed a quarterback. Wasn't too pleased with the quarterback room. Liked what I'd seen from Tua. So, managed to buy into that. The hype that had been happening just uh, two seasons ago, if you can remember that. Give up Ed Dillon and a 2022 first to get to it. The 22 class, I have absolutely no faith in. I'd heard for years, it is not going to be a strong class. I think we have seen that's kind of true. These guys aren't brilliant, the 22 class. I mean, there's still time, I suppose, for them to come on a bit. But yeah, not... Not the best. We'll have a look at that class in a minute. So I managed to get two for Edge Dillon and a first, which I was very pleased with. 
Uh, dropped Donald Parham, picked up Xavier Jones whenever the Rams were having some running difficulty. Picked up Nick Foles in case I needed him. Um, turned out I didn't. Uh, look at this. David Njoku obviously was having some trouble at the Browns. Dropped him and brought in uh, Jared Cook. I believe that's whenever Jared Cook was obviously starting and playing. I must have been desperate for a tight end. Must have been absolutely desperate for a tight end. Then. Stupid move on my part, getting rid of David Njoku. Yeah, you can see I must have been lucky because I picked up Tyler Conklin as well. Uh, Michael Strong, thank you very much, Alex, for that tip. I'm trying to pick him up everywhere because of Alex. Um, Nick Foles, go to Nick Foles. Picked up Le'Veon Bell, picked up AJ Green, dropping Trey Quan Smith, Juwan Johnson picking him up. That's not the JJ Taylor. Yeah, so lots of little moves here. You can see how active, you know, I am trying to be here. 30th of September, 3rd of October, 24th of October, trying to always make moves, sending trade offers out all the time as well. You're not seeing here the rejected trades. I would take all day to go through that. 2nd of November, we have a trade go through. I pick up you know, Gibson. I give up Jimmy Garoppolo and Brian Edwards and the 4th. At the time, delighted with that because Antonio Gibson, I was sure he was going to be you know, a real hot commodity. A bit up and down, but he actually has performed well, well enough. And we'll get back to Antonio Gibson later. Um, I also, again, some more waiver wires here. Uh, Jeremy McNichols, I think, uh, coming in and JJ Taylor being dropped. So nothing of huge significance here. Davis Mills, you can see here, had to be dropped. We're going to get in a minute about Davis Mills. We'll have a look at the rookie draft. Um, no other trades of significance here that we can see. So let's let's go over here. Let's have a look at that rookie draft and see who I took in 2021. Davis Mills, we mentioned that he was a quarterback I took. Uh, wasn't the confirmed starter at that stage. So you might think, why would you drop Davis Mills? He wasn't starting at that stage. So took Javante Williams in the first round. 111 was delighted to get that value for Javante. Then took him in the second. And Davis Mills in the third round. And that was it. That was the only picks I had. In hindsight, looking at this, I mean, Javante, I'm pretty pleased. I think that's the best value that I could have got there. I wouldn't really want to have taken anyone over Javante. In hindsight, a lot I should have taken Amon Ross St. Brown, right? That would have been a much better pick, picking Amon Ross St. Brown. Or, I mean, Kadarius Tony, maybe I suppose you'd rather have him. And then, of course, here, Ramondre Stevenson would have loved to have picked him up. Um, but I took Davis Mill. I know I didn't, in fact, take Davis Mills. He was later, but yeah, Ramondre Stevenson. I would have even taken him. Fine, but of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. So missed out on that there. So again, I'm not making blockbuster moves here. It's just slowly incrementing, making little changes to get better. So let's have a little look now at the next season. So we are. I did not win the league that year. You'll be shocked to hear. Let's have a little look here at. The league winning year. So this was the year I won the league. What kind of moves did I make to win the league this year? So if we look here, you'll see the rookie draft. You'll notice I got no picks. I got rid of them all. Because again, I did not strongly believe in this class. I know we've got people in like Garrett Wilson who I do like and Kenneth Walker and Brees Hall, obviously. I'm going to still stand by it. I don't think this, when it's all said and done, will be a particularly strong class. You have people like Sky Moore, who was going in the first there. You've got people on Burks and Drake London have looked okay, I suppose. But yeah, look at the second round there. Isaiah Spiller in the second round. You know, Davis Price in the second round. It's kind of a shallow, kind of a weak class. So I do stand by it, especially because, you know, it did bring me a title in this league. So let's have a look at some of the other moves I made this year. So it started off at buying Jalen Waddle for two first-round picks. This was about three days after Tyreek Hill got traded. I thought, I bet I can get Jalen Waddle for two, two firsts. Because people are going to think that Waddle's going to fall off a cliff and Tyreek Hill's going to be the guy. I thought the case Jalen Waddle's still an elite elite prospect. So delighted to get, you know, a wide receiver one and Jalen Waddle for, you know, two firsts and what will turn out to be late firsts as well. So very pleased with that. Then managed to pick up Rashad Penny, who, again, this is before he was kind of confirmed as the guy, right? Rashad Penny, I got for a third and a fourth. Really, really a job for me at the start of the year. Uh, picked up Daniel Bellinger 
of waivers. Delighted with that. Daniel Bellinger, one of my most owned players in Dynasty Fantasy Football. He was one guy I did believe in in that class. And luckily, he fell to me in a lot of the waivers. So that was really good. We picked up, I think this is Sikondre, why I just wanted a piece of that Dolphins backfield wasn't to be here. We talked about Antonio Gibson earlier. It didn't work out. I wasn't totally pleased with the trade. So what I did was I moved off Antonio Gibson while he still had that hype. I managed to get an older running back in Aaron Jones. And I got a 2023 first back. Gave up Antonio Gibson a second and a third. Was really get not only Jones but also that 2023 first which I'm able to use a little bit later on so delighted with that and that worked out really well for me in the season picked up Ked Dotton on the waivers which was really pleased with Snoop Connor best name picked him off the waivers wasn't to do much um, Ingram as well not to do much here and getting people like that who actually did have a small role um, here a nice little trade I traded off Corey Davis brought in Donovan Peoples Jones that was sort of, and this is at September 20th, 2022. Here I'm thinking, you know, Deshaun Watson's coming back. Donovan Peoples-Jones could be a good weapon to have. So thinking ahead and thinking long term. So getting rid of Corey Davis, a short term person, getting in Donovan Peoples-Jones. So I was pleased with that. Then, you know, a, a lot of free agent moves that don't really matter too much in the long run, but may have been a, a nice plug and play like DeAndre Carter people who just can tick you over. Mike White, obviously. Things like that. And then, of course, a big one here. I to pick him up off the waivers after all that he's done in Zonov and Knight. And Chigo Kwanku. Things like that are so important. Those three players, right? Brock Purdy, Zonov and Knight, Chig Okonkwu. you got to get those guys while the getting's good. Okay? They're not going to be on anyone's waivers now. you got to get right on it. And look, December 7th, December 7th, December 11th, right? Look at that, the early bird, 8.08 a.m., right? 8.06 a.m., sorry. you got to be on the ball with this and find those waiver wire gems because later on, I might be able to trade some of these guys. In fact, I did, did Tronku later on because I needed someone more established in my championship game. Son of a night, you might be able to trade Brock Purdy. You're going to trade like 10 firsts for Brock Purdy right now, right? So you got to be on the ball on the waivers. That really does help. There is that trade I talked about. I had to get someone more established. I got in Evan Ingram, the Jags, in that last game. You know, and I didn't, I didn't trust Tennessee without Ryan Tannehill in that last game for the championship. So I had to get in someone more established. So brought in Chico Konku and a fourth to get Evan Ingram. You know, Okonku just two weeks prior. I got for free. So I'm essentially giving up a fourth round pick for here, which is absolutely brilliant. And that is it. That is what won me the championship. Can you remember the team from the start? Yeah? Let's read it out again. Let's have a look at the team that I started in the championship final, okay? Christian McCaffrey, Russell Wilson, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, T. Van Ayuk, LaVisco Chenault, Edge Dillon, Matthew Stafford, Curtis Samuel, Corey Davis, Irv Smith, Alexander Madison, Jimmy Garoppolo, DJ Dallas, Dolan Parham, Rob Gronkowski, James Washington, Jacob Eason, Traquan Smith, David Njoku. Yeah, remember that? Here is the championship team. Brock Purdy, Aaron Jones, DeAndre Swift. Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Waddle, T. Higgins, Evan Ingram, Christian McCaffrey, Jerry Judy, Zay Jones, and Mike White. It's a different team entirely. Right? Busted. Brandon Ayuk, T. Higgins, Christian McCaffrey. That's it. They're the only people that started my championship game from my original draft, which was only in 2021. So, I suppose here, if going to give any advice for how to win a championship you got to be active you got to make moves and you got to make them as often as you can you know be on the ball don't be you know reactive be active get there first make people react to you so that's the best advice that i can give is you got to be really really quick in the waivers don't be happy with the team that you have. You see how quickly I treated for Antonio Gibson and then got rid of him. Like, don't be afraid to do that. Like, trust 
whatever you think. And always, Trent, like I said earlier, this show would be an hour and a half long if we talked about the trade offers that got rejected. Don't be afraid to send out a trade offer. You know, just send it out, see what happens. If it's rejected, fine. If someone's going to be a douche and say, like, I'm, I'm offended by that trade offer, eh, who cares, right? Who cares? For the 99 times it's rejected, you got that one time that you get that slam dunk success. You know, a couple of them in that example. So be active, send your trade offers, don't stick to that one team. And yeah, the most important thing we don't mention, sometimes you just need a little bit of luck as well. So hopefully that helps showing you exactly, that was a quick whistle stop. Hopefully that helps showing you exactly, you know, how I went about going from 2021 all the way through a couple of drafts to winning a championship this year. we got a few more of these for you, so hopefully you enjoyed them. Uh, if you did like the show, please remember, you know, give a like, give a comment, give a share, and most importantly, that subscribe button as well for me. We're, we're on the road to 200 subscribers, so that is fantastic. So let's, let's keep that going. And in the meantime, remember, keep yourselves, keep your teams lit, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.